Oh hi everyone and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai channel. Well you've just got me in the middle of repotting another English elm. Now this one was much the same as the other one so I didn't make a full video on it but uh, it is an interesting elm nonetheless. Now what, what I thought was very fascinating about this tree was its root base. So you can see we have quite a few exposed roots or aerial roots which traditionally English elms don't have but for this tree I just thought it was quite interesting so I kept those and thought I'd develop them just to make for a more interesting tree. But what it did get me thinking about was, well, how do trees look in the wild? And so what I did is I went out to my local park where there were some fantastic trees, uh, all different varieties from elms to oaks to yews, among many, many others. So I thought I'd take you along with me and uh, let's explore the local park. Oh hi everyone and welcome back. So I wanted to bring you to a different park and uh, just explore some different trees. So let's uh, take a look around and see what we can find. So straight away we can see this interesting yew tree coming up and then the branches are coming over the, the pathway here. Excellent, look at those creeping branches, just the way that they come over, fantastic. See so here's a close up of one of the bases of these yews, fantastic tree, look at that. It goes up, it's not a twin trunk as such because at the base, it's uh, one one trunk and then it splits quite quite low down into three, I think. No, no, it's two. It's just the veins on this tree, you know, make it look as though it's uh, more trunks than it is. But what a weird looking tree. Hello, little fella. What are you doing? Just going down the yew tree. So uh, this tree leaning up here, this is another yew tree. And what I love about yew trees is the way that the, the veins, <laughs> that squirrels just cling to the side there a bit. What I love is the, the veins. And you can trace the veins all the way down to the ground and the, the roots just spread up. Not the best root system on this one, I guess you could say. I mean, it's, it's good enough, but yeah, not the best. As another squirrel just coming into view there. So one of the main reasons why the squirrels run so freely in this park is because uh, pets aren't allowed, you know, dogs aren't allowed. And uh, also there are no ball games allowed. So of course, you know, kids can't play football or any kind of um, ball related sport in this park. So of course, the uh, birds and the squirrels just have free run and they can just enjoy themselves much like uh, they do in, in nature, in, in, in the you know, wilderness. And I thought I'll also show you this tree too. This is a, a, a maple tree, I believe. I'm not entirely sure what kind of a maple tree, but what an interesting root base on this too. Fantastic roots coming off, coming off in all different directions again, surrounding the trunk. Again, a nice radial root uh, spread. So I've just come to a somewhat quiet part of the park. I mean, you do have the river there in the in the background or the little stream, but I did just want to show you this tree. This is a, a yew and there are little tags on here. So I'm not sure what that says on there. Uh, common yew, right, it just tells you what the tree is. It's a common yew. And it's that, that, that vein, that blood vein sort of look. That really sort of twisted macabre bark and very gnarly looking vein-like uh, trunk. And it's, yeah, really, really fantastic look that yew trees have. But yeah, it comes down into the ground. Not a big root system on this one, surface root system on this one, but a very interesting tree. This tree on the other hand. Now this, I believe, is not entirely sure what this is. I think it's some type of maple, possibly. But yeah, the root base on this is huge. Big, chunky roots coming down, coming deep into the ground. Yeah, they don't, they don't sort of spread out too far. It's not like they come out and then they, you know, go across the ground, they go deep into the ground. But yeah, very, you know, chunky looking root base on this. Wow, they're fantastic. But yeah, as for what this is, I'm not entirely sure. And that little note on there, that doesn't, oh, London Plain, London Plain. This is the London Plain tree. So it is a type of maple. Yeah, London Plain. And this is what I love about going out to the parks and the, just the wilderness and the woods, because you can see the trees that you're trying to grow as bonsai trees in their natural environment. Now, yes, you could argue this is a park and a lot of these trees have been sculpted, um, but you know, as I say, you know, no, uh, no pets, no ball games or anything like that are allowed in this park. It is to some extent kept natural, 
So it's just amazing, you know, seeing how these trees develop. And especially when you're trying to grow trees from seed or maybe young, you know, trying to go grow uh, trees from cuttings and that, to see how they grow in their natural environment or in an open environment like this, it's just a fantastic inspiration. Uh, so just in here, I wanted to show you this great tree. Look at the nabari on this tree, fantastic. Again, this is another maple. Not entirely sure what maple it is, but yeah, fantastic root base. We just come up, what is this maple? It's, oh, it's not a maple, it's a copper beech. It's a copper beech. But a very, look at this root base, fantastic. See, fantastic. Also, I nearly dropped the camera. Yeah, fantastic root base. Can I just come around here? I think I can. I'll show you the back side of this root base just in here. Yeah, excellent. And really chunky roots coming coming down and uh, going deep into the ground. Fantastic. But if you just pull back, give you a better view of this tree. This here, I thought it was a maple, but it's not. It's actually a copper beech. So I'm just going down these intricate little pathways and I think I've spotted something. We just go between these two hedges. It's almost like the secret garden going into the distance. Where are we going? Oh, this is a beautiful little little garden. Look at this, it's all nice around here. Not quite sure what this, I think that's a type of holly, that tree. Nice little broom style tree, that one. Yeah, very intricate, intricate, intricately designed, pretty teeth in gap, an intricately designed garden. Some different plants and that in there. Again, you know, I'm filming this in February, so, you know, you can imagine this place being in full bloom, you know, come the spring and summer. These nice holly bushes are little holly trees all around. Um, seating area all the way around. Different trees. This is a type of fir. Not entirely sure what type of fir that is, but an interesting type of fir. Uh, no, it's cypress tree. Ah, hang on. We have little cones. I wonder if I can grab one of them. We have little cones on here. I think this might be. I think if I just get one of these cones, I'll just take it off. Ah, oh, like so. I believe this is a. Ah, uh, God, what, what is this cypress? They, these produce really, really tiny little seeds, and uh, I think they propagate very easily. So, yeah, I'm trying to grow some of these from seeds, so that'd be an interesting project. Oh, I've just spotted another entrance. So, if we just come around here, again, it's like a secret garden again. Where are we going? It's like a little dirt pathway here. Oh, we have another field and all these different trees, young trees. Uh, I wonder what these are. Is there a tag on here? A home, I think this is a home oak. Is that home oak? Yeah, home oak. These are home oak trees. A group of trees. Almost in the clump style. Yeah, very interesting. Young trees, not a whole lot of character, but yeah, interesting nonetheless. Don't have any sort of buttress root systems or interesting root systems just yet, but you know, in time, in time. But there's a young tree just here. No name tag on that one, so not sure about that one, but yeah, very interesting young tree. So like before, no ball games allowed. But if we just go past the bin just here, just wanted to show you this tree. What an interesting set of anchor roots on this tree. This of course is a slanting tree, not a cascade. I wonder what it is. Let's just take a look at the name tag on here. This is a Catalpa, uh, not quite sure what that is, an Indian bean tree. Oh, an Indian bean. I'm actually growing some Indian bean trees from seed, so this is very good inspiration. But yeah, very interesting uh, root spread on this, all going in the one direction, of course acting as anchor roots. You can see there aren't too many on the other side. And then of course that trunk comes up and the branches are pretty much all going into that direction. There are a few going up, straight up, but what I like about this sort of tree is the, the trunk goes up, but the branches continue to go into the same, you know, following the same direction. And it adds to a really interesting looking effect. There is a, a bit of a, a wound to this tree just in here. That's a really cool characteristic just in there. But some really interesting anchor roots. Really fascinating tree. Now I did just want to show you this tree real quick. Now I believe this is an oak and a very interesting oak at that. Now, you can see there is a sign there saying please do not climb on this tree. Now these railings going around, 
they must have been here or been put in place around about 10 years ago, maybe seven, 10 years ago. Because back when I was a kid, this tree was open. It's just part of this open field. And uh, we did used to climb on this tree. The story goes, and again, I'm not 100% sure if this is true, but the story goes that a bomb, you know, during World War II, several bombs were dropped around the town of Lewis. And it was the shock waves from a bomb that disturbed the root base and caused the tree to lean. And that is why it has this lean to it today. Now, again, whether or not that is true, I'm not 100% sure, but I can certainly imagine that because as I say, many bombs were dropped on the, on the town of Lewis, on the historical town of Lewis. But yeah, there we have that very, very interesting looking oak tree. Fantastic. So I think with that, the weather is starting to turn, so I might have to bring this little tour to an end. And we are just about to approach the, the exit just here. And there's a little cat that's come to join us. And out we go through the exit, back on to the main streets. So yeah, quite an interesting place. I mean, there's full of different types of trees. It is owned by the local council, so it is protected. Uh, no dogs or ball games are allowed, so you know the schools run free, and it is just a very peaceful place to be on a on a summer's afternoon. It's and you know for the most part you see people sitting there reading their books or listening to music and just enjoying themselves. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's a really nice place to be, and of course those trees really look fantastic. The uh, copper beech and uh, the oak that the that had the damage to it that they reckon um, was caused by bomb damage, uh, among many other trees. The views, oh, they all look fantastic and they've given me plenty of inspiration for uh, my bonsai trees and styling them and, and especially developing the surface roots. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it too and I hope it gave you inspiration. And uh, as always guys, you know, take it easy and until next time, have a great day and I will catch you on the next one.